This is Tech Addicts. This week, what's new with Pixels? There's a bunch of rugged tablets coming. The Xiaomi 13 Ultra will be available in the UK. The Retroid Pocket Flip debuts. And Amazon doing away with newspapers and magazines. Welcome to this, the Tech Addicts Podcast, for Sunday, the 26th of March. I'm your host, Mr. Gareth Miles, and I'm joined, as always, by Mr. Ted... <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> Ted Salmon, who's very miserable today because it's now BST, ridiculously changing clocks all the time. So uh, and, uh, It's going to be light at 8 o'clock. It really annoys me. Well, it might even be later than that for you, because you're further north, of course, but... Um, yes, very, very annoying. I, the, the beginning of the part of the year I don't like. The um, Talking of which, that smart plug that you got me to buy eventually after nagging me for about three years, it didn't, it mm-hmm. didn't deal with this um, BST change at all. I was really surprised. I, my, I have my light in the lounge to turn off at... Um, the lounge to turn off at... The lounge... <laughs> One fifteen a.m. because um, I nearly always go to bed at one o'clock, and um, woke up this morning still on, and so that Ooh. smart. That's not very smart, is it? Cuh. No, it must be more to do with the actual app that's behind it because it's it's TP Link, isn't it? It is TP. Yeah. So that's that's the Casa app, or is it the other it's one? It's the Tapper. Tapper, yeah. right? Okay, I, you should be using the Casa. It's much better. It uh, it covers DST, whereas. Uh, I don't know. I'm just making that up. Just making it sound a wee bit <laughs> yeah. more like I know what I'm talking about, um, which is difficult. It's just it, it, it um, just ignored the command. The schedule says off at zero one fifteen, and it's like it missed out the whole hour because the clocks went from one till t- to two. It just ignored every command that's inside that one hour slot. Well, do you think that perhaps inside of it, there's a tiny little penful style character going, oh, ECDM, what do we do? Do we turn it off? Do we not turn it off? The, the instructions are a wee bit complicated here. Um, which is 115? Or do we? Tur- or did it turn off maybe for a little while and then turn back on? Mm. Who knows? Anyway, so I didn't think that was very smart. But yeah, sure, right. It might be down to that particular make. Mm. Anyway, yes. um, uh, weather report is uh, favourable. Uh, cloudy and nice and cool for me and with a prospect of getting colder on Monday. How are things your end? Grey. Yeah. Just grey. <laughs> Very typical of Northern Ireland. It's a grey country most of the time. Yeah. But what can you do? What can you do? Anyway, so um, I, I, I wanted to tell a story this morning because something funny happened to me last <laughs> night. Um, I picked up off of Amazon a little torch that I have done an unboxing on, but I'm I'm just sort of testing it out and playing with it. And I'm actually really enjoying it because it turns out it's really good as opposed to really crap. Um, This is the the Sofern, S-O-F-I-R-N, SP35 rechargeable LED torch, 2000 lumen, uh, with ATR, which which means something to someone somewhere. Um, this cost me 40 quid, but I got a, I think it was about 10% off at the time. I noticed this morning it's uh, 5%, but I've, I vaguely remember it costing me 30 quid. Mm-hmm. Is that 10%? Sure. <laughs> no, it's not 10%, mm-hmm. that's 25% or something like that. I don't know. But I got it for 30 quid and I thought, oh, oh it looks all right. And it's rechargeable, so Ted won't like it. Um, and I'll be able to go all about my business and everyone will be happy. It'll, it'll work off uh, USB Type C. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And there were good re- reviews, so I thought I'd, I'd test it out myself. Last night, my wife was in the dining room, and she she came, she came to me and went, Gareth, Gareth, there's a light in the sky. And I went, wow, oh, crikey. Went down and had a look out the window, and there, there was a light in the sky, um, but it was the same colour as the street light across the street. And I was looking out the back of my house, and it was above the neighbour's bungalow, and I just thought, well, it's the same colour as a streetlight. There isn't one over there, so it must be a reflection of one of the ones in front of our house. 
perhaps I've got a TV aerial up there. And my wife was like, no, there's no way you could work that out from looking at that tiny little orange blob up there. It's like, well, it's not moving. If we go to the kitchen, can you still see it? No, we can't see it. But then I remembered I had this torch. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to go and get that torch and I'm going to shine it up there and show that there's a TV aerial. And then all of my, it'll all work in her head and it'll all fall into place. So I went and got this and I, I turned it, I cranked it up to full and I turned it on and pointed it at the chimney. <laughs> the entire neighborhood went white. And I was like, oh crap, I turned it off quickly. And I went back into the house and I was, I looked out the back curtains uh, of the dining room and I saw all these curtains twitching <laughs> of the houses that were affected. And I just imagined it was this huge bright white light. And they must have thought there was a nuclear explosion or wow. something going off. I was like, what the hell was that at midnight? I'm like, oh, right, okay. I-, I won't do that again. This is a really bright wow, torch. Yeah. It's a cracker. Sounds really good. <laughs> Amazing. For, and, and for 30 quid or, or even less... Oh no, thirty nine ninety nine less five percent. Yeah, but even so, you know, if it's that good, perhaps that's what the ATR's about. <laughs> Two thousand. Yeah, well, I, I've half heard. <laughs> yes, I have heard that people have these these ridiculously powerful LED torches, and I wanted to get in on that game because there's nothing better than being able to light up a whole field. Not that I end up in the middle of a field frequently at at midnight cow tipping or anything Mm. like that but just being able to have a decent torch and some of the led torches that i've had in the past are a bit limp whenever it comes to actually going to the distance so i'm looking into the whole uh uh, lighting up a complete distance uh, with an led torch in the way that bulb torches used to be able to do that and I'm, I'm sure some folk will come back and, and mention the Weeby Group uh, recommendations and, and corrections on things that I've been saying. But uh, I, I don't know enough about it at the moment, but I'm, I'm exploring this avenue to see how these work because they are pretty darn you cool see the, and they get really hot. You see the picture of the um, the bloke with the peak cap on with the front of, the, the front of his cap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, but yeah, that's seriously powerful, isn't it? And for for what? It'd be interesting to see how long the battery lasts. If you if you work it on turbo mode, which it looks like is the one that is the the, the most powerful mode, it'd be interesting to see how long the battery lasts. Well, there's someone actually. One of the users has put in the the review images on Amazon um, a graph where they've got the, the, the torch with. Fan cooling on, and how long it's lasted, and the runtime is just over a hundred minutes. Wow! Relative output, and then it drops way down. I've got it on turbo oh, mode. Yeah. yeah, the turbo mode. Going by the pictures, is the one that you're probably talking about. Yeah, um, <laughs> it bothers the neighbours yeah. greatly. Fan cooled. That's terrific. It's amazing that what people do. Fancy, fancy coming up with a graph and putting it in Amazon. <laughs> well, it really makes you realise that there's some science behind these, yeah. and there really are enthusiasts. I have a friend who's big into these torches, and he's recommended a few names to me that I, I've never remembered, but I just thought I'd go out on my own and pick one mm. and, and have a go with it. And this seemed to have some really good reviews attached to it, so yeah, yeah. I thought I'd have Very a play good. and join a more enlightening yeah, world. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> joke in there. Um, changing the topic, um, I was um, playing about with Chrome, as I do most of the time, and I noticed that the U-Block Origin thingy in the top corner had got a yellow mm-hmm. kind of flag on it. And I did wonder, I don't know if you use that, but I did wonder if this was the um, the switch that Google was threatening to throw last year and blocking ad blockers in Chrome. Um, have you, do you use that? Have yeah. you seen that? Well, yeah, I've, I've, I've just paid attention to it this morning and I'm looking at Google Docs and it's sitting with a sign in front of it going 418 ads, have blo- 419 ad, 420 ads have been blocked on Google Docs. Yeah, well, I, I've got it turned off for Google Docs, but if I, but if I go to, I, I've just gone to Gmail, and on the badge, there's a yellow badge in front of it with an exclamation mark, and then if I drill, if I click on it, there's all sorts of stuff that it's gobbledygook that I don't understand with all sorts of 
crap. It, it, the point is that it's it's not usual, and I wonder if Google have thrown the switch, and they're saying yeah, they must no have, yeah. more ad blockers on Chrome. Yeah. This is just counting up now. Um, it's, it's oh, now that I've opened Gmail, it's seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three. So it's just just it blocking ads, I think, but blocking them continuously. <laughs> Don't know. I, there's something screwy going on anyway. Yeah. So watch out. Um, if anyone's listening to this and knows more about this, do let us know. In the MeWe group, would be the best place, of course. Yeah, hopefully we'll start to see uh, uh, explanations of what to do and what. What's, if if you're safe enough to remove this now, if Google's got this all sorted, yeah. that you're not going to start seeing scary ads come through. You know, the ones that um, that can be hack or can hack your system and stuff that we had in the past. I'm just worried about turning those sorts of things off. But obviously, I'd love to be able to run a browser without the need for an ad blocker. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Because we've seen in the past where ad blockers have gone to the dark side and harvested your information and sent it off to Nasty McNasty. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they need to address that because a lot of people will possibly stop using Chrome and use something else if they don't sort it out. Sort it out. Sort it out, yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose. Um, I wonder if I was. Comp- no, I won't do it live on air. Compare because I've got. Uh, I've, I've got Firefox installed mm-hmm. as well, so could have run the website to see what was going on there. But I'd have to log in and log out. Not. I don't know what Edge. Jerry I don't know what Edge does. You you were playing with um, Bra- Bra- what was it? Brave. Oh, yeah, uh, a while ago, a while yeah. ago yeah. and there's also Opera. Um, I don't know how, what they how they do it, but it, it's just that I've got everything in Chrome, and uh, you know, it's really annoying to <laughs> have to change everything and and for it not to be Google. Very, very annoying. Well, I can't imagine Google will make a change like this severe uh, that could penetrate um, the 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 security of their whole browser. There must be something that they've done that we just don't know about yet Uh, that makes it all inherently more safe that they're willing to say you can turn off or you will turn off ad blockers whether you like it or not we'll see so we'll see we'll see right moving into the hardware a hard line for the hardware oh yeah ricky's not with us this week um he'll hopefully be back with us in two weeks Mm -hmm. maybe possibly um yes so we've got uh, a few new bits of information about uh the pixel and and what will be upcoming I wouldn't exactly say that these are particularly new or fancy things. They're just extra work is being carried out on some of the features of Pixel, and Google are trying to push that across um, to, you know, a, a, as a feature drop, yeah. which is nice, I suppose. <laughs> They're saying that Night Sight will be even faster. I'd, I'd like to know if anyone's had any issues with the speed at which Night Sight works. I haven't. I've taken a number of pictures at night, and I've just been kind of blown away by what Google manages to do. I've never thought, oh, that could be faster. <laughs> so um, I'm all right with that. Uh, Magic Eraser um, is available on more Pixel phones. I, I've never actually used it, to be honest, but oh, it's, um, it's nice that it's, it's there. It's good fun. It works really well. <laughs> you can catch it out, but it is good fun playing with. Yeah, well, I maybe have to have a go with it mm. again, just to see... Um, and then you can save time and sanity with Direct My Call, which I have done a few times. Um, working from home, I've been able to answer my phone, and I am getting a few uh, uh, robo calls or whatever or scammy calls, and I'll put it through this. Oh no, that's that, that's the other thing. This this is the one oh. where it gives you the options when you're it, it, this only, this only works in america incidentally um but when you oh. call a, a, a company it knows what the options on the the the, the what's it are and, oh, and you, yes, you can tap them right. instead of having to sit through it all but yeah we haven't seen that yet the the other thing you're talking about is yeah you're quite right the um the the managing um people when they phone you you can the the, yeah. you, the, the robot can yeah call yeah, screening that's, right, that's the word yeah yeah yeah. So there's also Elevate Your Health and Fitness, uh, the, the tracking game, uh, which uh, I love, uh, it's health, health Connect. Ted, obviously, you'll be all over that. Being a, What's health and fitness? Uh, a health. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's where you walk out to your mo- uh, your your moped and unlock it, and then <laughs> to go somewhere, and then you get off it and walk from your moped to to uh, the greasy spoon. That you're going to. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so okay. Um, you'll be able to see timers across your Pixel devices. So if you own more than one Pixel, I don't think people do own more than one Pixel. I do. Do you own one? I know, but outside of uh, reviewing right. phones and being phone enthusiasts, but you might have a Pixel. Um, you might have a Pixel tablet soon, and it also works across Nest devices. So um, all sorts of um, smart speakers and stuff like that. What they're saying is that the the timers will just. Um, um, work across all those devices, like they do incidentally at the moment on the Samsung ecosphere and probably on Apple as well. Yes, yes. And then there's fall detection as well. Yeah, fall detection, um, this is the one that they had trouble with because the these people on roller coasters were they kept phoning 999. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so they, they had to kind of think again. But the, but Pixel, the Google are now guaranteeing that the um, it be down to motion det- sensors and on-device machine le- learning, it will now differentiate between a hard fall um, uh, from uh, vigorous phys- physical activity or recovering from a small stumble to minimise accidental emergency calls. So, they, In other words, they reckon that they've got that sorted and fixed. Um, so we'll see. My mum has got a Pixel watch and um, she's going to turn it on at some point and see if it works. So it is more directed to Pixel Watch than Pixel phones? Because yeah. who takes their phone on a road? No, no, no. They're just yeah, asking yeah, no, for it's trouble. The watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's a, it's a pretty tidy little list yeah. there. Anything else that's exciting? Uh, new emoji combinations available for the emoji kitchen. Um, d- digital car keys mm-hmm. are turned on for. I think it's just for BMW at the moment. Um, fast pair for Chromebooks. I'll, I'll come to that later, um, or m- maybe I don't need to now. Fast pair for Chromebooks is so that you can. You, you've probably seen fast pair work with some of your um, Pixel devices with certain headphones and certain um, Bluetooth mm-hmm. stuff and they're switching that on for Chromebooks so um, that is coming uh-huh. soon and you should be able to it very very quickly and easily like you can in the Apple world just turn it on and that's it it knows what you want to do and it's all very intelligent so that saves uh, talking about it later yeah but then you know, it's, it's really annoying because it's not compatible with certain yeah. things say for example Phone, laptop, or phone, Chromebook, and uh, tablet. Yeah, one of those isn't going to be compatible with 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 it somewhere along the line. Oh, there's Hold for Me as well. Hold for Me is now available in Japan, but it's only available in four countries: Canada, Australia, U.S., and America. Oh no, U.S. And What's America. Hold for Me? Hold for Me means that when you're phoning up a company, um, if they put you on hold, then you can get the phone to just um, you you can go away from it and it'll, and it'll buzz you or it'll oh, tell you when you're, it's your turn in the queue and all that sort of thing. Um, and um, when the person answers it, I think it says to them, um, "We're just calling so and so to the phone now" or something like that. It, it, it saves you hanging about waiting um, for the. When it comes to the UK, I'll know more about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose some phone lines do have that built in, and it's like, well, we'll call you back whenever it's your yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah. And they're good companies, uh, whereas there's crap companies that don't yeah. do that. And they should be exploited for that reason. Right, okay, so we're getting some renders through of the Google Pixel 8 Pro, uh, which is quite nice. On leaks have dropped a few. Um, and it looks like they're they're staying with this design, which is... Uh, a bit strange you know usually most devices kind of do it for two generations and then move on to something new but the new pixel 8 pro and indeed the 7a which kind of feeds into the last generation anyway uh is keeping a bit of a flavor from their previous generations ted is there anything exciting we should be looking for on this um the 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 one thing that is different about the design and i thoroughly approve of is the rounded corners i think that makes a huge difference the pic the pixel Mm. 6 and 7 have been very very square and when you have that up against a another device that's got nicely rounded corners like this render shows 
It, it does make yeah. a huge difference to handling and to picking up and putting down. And I, I, I like that. I don't like the. Um, I never have liked that great big camera shelf thing across the back. I think it's ugly and horrible. Um, but I do approve. I like the whole rounded corners thing. Yeah, oh, I love the camera shelf. It's it's one of my favorite things about the, even the Pixel Six. Um, very very happy with it. Love it to death. Anyway, if I could marry a smartphone, it would be that. <laughs> more more interesting. I think is the Pixel Fold that's coming, um, which uh, again there are renders out there, and that that looks like a really interesting device. And the Pixel Seven A in this same article is rumored to arrive in June. Um, which uh, again it looks like it might be interesting because they they're going a bit smaller than with that. I, I think that we spoke about that on the last show, but the fold the fold mm. will be the one because it's a a folding world that we're living in. It seems, and um, it looks like it's very nicely done in the style of the Duo, the Microsoft Surface Duo, but um, without the split screen. Uh, we, we'll have to see. Not thin and narrow like the the Samsung, but actually a bit broader, like the, the Oppo. I like the look of it. So that there is a, a fully resident camera shelf on the full, from yeah, what it looks like as yeah. well. Where do you stand on yeah. that? Are you not no, a fan I'm of not. that? And I didn't like the Duo 2 because of that. I think the Duo 2 camera lump on the back made it ugly and stupid. And <laughs> and it's, it prevented you from folding it back, back on itself. Now, you won't have that problem with the Pixel Fold because it doesn't pertain, uh, uh, claim to fold back on itself. It's because it's got a creasing screen. It won't be able to. So it won't be so bad on that. But yeah, I don't like that at all. I think they they need to they need to get rid of these sticking out bits from the back of phones. I, I disapprove. You got to wonder, given the the teething problems that Google's had with their Pixel phones, every time the new line has arrived, it's always taken about six months for it to become a wee bit more well, a wee bit solid to to use on a daily basis how many people are actually going to other than enthusiasts are going to actually go out and actively seek out the Pixel Fold I just I don't see it being a, a particularly big seller at all until they're on like their third or fourth generation whenever it's established I just think it's going to be a mucky mess of of, uh, of incompatible bits of technology that, that fault on you all the time well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But but apparently everyone is calling 2023 the year of the fold. And it, it's just everyone's going to be in on it and doing... Fun. There's no word from Apple yet, of course, what they're going to do. But um, everyone else seems to be in there and doing it. Well, not everyone else, but, you know, lots of the big players are. Um, and folding is the way to go. And I guess Google have decided that if Pixel's going to stay in that kind of market then they need to do one themselves okay yeah yeah well they, they have to start somewhere obviously but I, I just don't think they have a great track record of being able to debut new hardware without real warts yeah you know, and yeah. kinks and yeah and, 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 all right and well <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, true uh we are going back in time to a a, a, a a name that I know from years ago, whenever I think HTC used to make uh, devices that were rebadged to Doogee. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're seeing Doogee coming back uh, with the R10 rugged tablet that has a Helio G99 processor inside of it. This is a quite nice looking little tablet, I suppose. With uh, it's got a twenty megapixel Sony sensor in there as well, so it it'll be good to take pictures on a, on a building site if if you need to. And it has a sixteen megapixel uh, Samsung unit on the front for whenever your boss phones in to say, "Are you on site yet?" And I want a video conference with you. It's got high res audio standards, um, and a three point five millimeter headphone jack on board. Uh, with uh, Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6. But more importantly, under the hood, alongside that Helio G99 system on chip, uh, is uh, 8 gigabytes of DDR4X RAM and 128 gigabytes of UFS 2.2 storage. It's got a micro SD card um, and a 10.36 inch 2K IPS display. This <laughs> does sound quite a uh, a, a well-specced. Device. Um, 
there's no there's What's no that? word on IP rating apparently um, or mill standard um, specification. So uh -huh. rugged, no one seems to be very sure what rugged really means when it comes to rugged. But it does look rugged, doesn't it? It looks really solid. Yeah. It looks like a building site um, device. But yeah, Doogie. The trouble with Doogie, um, like many of these. Um, lower end Chinese brands is that they don't do any updates so you've got to be sure that this is starting with Android 13 out of the box which is really good because even if it never gets another update at least you've got you know a couple of years before you start to think yeah, this is out of date um, the security de updates is the same, the same problem but yeah Doogie historically are just crap at that really? Mm. ok mm, right. I haven't, I haven't heard of them in a, in a while. I have. I've, I think I've heard them coming up every now and again, but I've never actually seen them since. I remember having a wee set of headphones with their branding on I've got, it. I've um, got a, fee, a remote control. Uh, isn't this isn't this one of the brands that Amazon um, ditched because they were very naughty? Let me see if there's anything on Amazon at all. My doogie. Whoops, doogie. Doogie. Oh no, there is, there is, yeah, there's plenty of them, so it's not them. Uh, forget everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they've let, let them back on again. Yeah, maybe. But it, it is a, it's a, it's a name I recognise from years ago, but I'm just having a look back, and the X95 from 2020 is the first one that uh, GSM Arena lists for them. But I remember... Whenever there was the T-Mobile Vario series, the HTC were, were making the devices and they were being shipped out to various different vendors um, and being rebadged before HTC decided to badge them themselves. Okay. And T-Mobile would badge them. And then Doogie, or Doogie, as I always <laughs> pronounced them, um, did them. And I, I had a few accessories because they were compatible between them, so whenever I went to get a pair of headphones and an inline remote control for my HTC Titan or something like mm -hmm. that, or T-Mobile Vario 2, um, I was able to go on to eBay or something and buy the Doogee variant of it right. and plug it in, and it would work. Uh, and it had that, it had, remember the EXT USB that HTC specialized in? Oh dear, who's that? Oh, that's my neighbour. He he's visually impaired driving around in his car. Blast the horn so that people get out of the way when he's turning a corner. Uh we we uh, have heard that the police have been called on him, but um, they haven't done no, I'm not I'm not laughing. <laughs> it's terrible. He shouldn't be doing that. He's got a tricycle as well that he zips about on. Um <laughs> That has flags that stick out whenever he wants to turn that. Oh, I forgot what your question was there. <laughs> I've forgotten as well. I'm sure it was crap one. <laughs> well, let's move on then to to another brand that is kind of on the fringes of not being updated ever. Yes, Blackview, the Tab 16. Now, this thing sounds too good to be true, to be honest. It's got to have some sort of hefty price tag to it. Um, but it's got some decent specs in there, and I was looking through it earlier and found the specs quite reasonable. Um, there's um, uh, 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 eight gigabytes of RAM plus six gigabytes of expansion. Uh, what? Expanded, Hang on a I don't remember expanded reading Expanded RAM. So that's the um, what Samsung called the um, RAM Plus or something. Oh. Up to 14 gigabytes yeah. of RAM. Okay, so you can have flavors of tablets up to 14 gigabytes. All right, there's 256 gigabytes of ROM, which is very nice. Uh, and it's got uh, an expansion card up to one terabyte in size. If you could find one of those or you can afford one of those, uh, give us a loan, please. Um, it uh, it runs... Wow, I, I read over this, but it doesn't look the same as what I read earlier on. Oh, there it is. Um, it's got an 18 watt fast charging on there, uh, which is good for four hours of gaming and uh, uh, HD video. It's got 11 inch uh, 2P, 2K IPS display, uh, Widevine L1 support, which they seem to be very pleased with, 80% uh, screened body ratio, uh, 2000 by 1200 resolution, 
uh, Smart K Quad Box Speakers, uh, WPS Set of, <laughs> of Essentials, which again, they're pleased with, mm. uh, Multi Window for Multitasking, uh, it's got a stylus pen, doesn't say if that's in the packaging or not, um, and it's uh, was 7 Seven thousand six hundred and eighty milliamp hour uh, battery in there, and it's got three reading modes. There's reading mode, uh, eye comfort mode, and dark mode. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like that's new. The, the info info <laughs> advert thingy, whatever it's called. In what's it called? Info. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, this graphic thingy, infographic. Yes. Is that it? Um, yes, I don't know. <laughs> they've really gone to town on it, haven't they? It looks like this is just stunning. There's everything but a star <laughs> round every item. <laughs> you can pick it up with your hands. Use your eyes to have a look at this tablet. The wow. chipset, the Unisoc T616, I looked up, and yes. it's being compared um, with the um, Snapdragon 680. So that's no slouch. That should be quite good. Uh, well, uh, it, it runs the Doke OS Doke. underscore P3, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is Android 12, but it seems to have its own uh, uh, thing over there, uh, uh, overlay. So it's a bit like, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, Smart OS. and uh, uh, Various versions of Android that have overlays on them. So Lord this one's got one called G- Doke. Yes, that's the one. Uh, Duke OSP right. 3.0. <laughs> which... Sounds like crap, doesn't it? <laughs> Duke. <laughs> <Dunk. laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's a very lovely tablet. Uh, they're, they're very pleased because uh, compared to their, their previous one, this has a display upgrade, a photography upgrade, an efficiency upgrade, and a convenience upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yet more things they put in their infographic. Blimey. And, and they're claiming that 18 watts is fast charging. Big highlighted um, infograph. 18 <laughs> watts, fast charging. Yes. <laughs> yes, I imagine it'll be splashed all across the box. It's an 11-inch tablet and an 11-inch PC, which is bigger than bigger, which is their their their, their quip, you know, their, their, their tagline. Bigger than bigger. Is it Android? Or is it a PC? Yes, it is. No, oh, it's, it's got it's a PC Android. mode. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, oh, you, it? The, the, oh. what they're saying is that it's got a PC mode where you can attach a, a keyboard and a mouse to it. And um, well, they've got a picture of a stylus, but then up, further up the top it said no stylus. Anyway, um, yeah, they're, they're not saying that it, it's got a Dex mode for your PC. They're saying that you can turn this into a PC by attaching a mouse. <laughs> And a and a keyboard that they'll sell to you, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and a, 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 a bundle if you need to. Yeah, it's, it's, I suppose it's a a decent enough looking little tablet combo set that's seventeen uh, percent faster at starting up than than something else. <laughs> Doesn't say what, but and yeah. it gets it calls it RAM fast, not fast RAM, but it's RAM really fast. Funny, isn't it? That, that whole item is just... You have to click through and look at that, dear listener, and, and look at all their infographics. They're really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. No, um, Blackview, I, I think they made a couple of phones, didn't they? As yeah, well? yeah, yeah. They, they make a few stuff. They've done some rugged stuff as well. It's another one of these doogie-type firms. And if you, if you search Amazon for Blackview, um, there's tons of it out there. But it's all just, you know, unsupported, cheap junk, basically. But this one looks like it might be different. They've, got, they've certainly gone to town on their marketing. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just, one of the other infographics uh, has game mode, but it also has cold room. Cold. I, I don't know what cold room. So whenever you go shopping, you can put your fish into it so they don't defrost. <laughs> I don't I don't know what a cold room cold is. Room. Which graphic is that? One, which, that, uh... uh one, two, three. It's it's the one closer to the bottom. You can see a big green Android man where they they talk about Duke oh, OS yeah, yeah. being uh, design up, convenience up, and smoothness up. But above cold that, room. there's game wow. mode and cool no room. Idea. Low mem info killer process as well is included there, which is useful for those who suffer from low mem info. <laughs> 
It's really funny. You must click through. Have a look at it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Highlights. Lots of highlights to that mm-hmm. tablet. Lots of them. Gibberish, too, but highlights. Um, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is going to be available globally. This is great news for anyone who's been waiting for one of these because they are gorgeous-looking phones. And they have camera powerhouses on them. Uh, Ted, are you going to buy one? Oh. The, yeah, the, the, well, that's the, the, we don't really know much about this phone yet, the Ultra. We thought it was going to be a China-only release, and the news here is that it's not going to be a China-only release. It's going to be a worldwide release. Um, but uh, the um, yeah, in this same report, which has come out of... Where's this report come from? Um, uh, GSM Arena? No, 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 but they're, they're quoting a report from somewhere. Anyway, what they're saying also is that the Oppo X6 Pro won't come out of China. And they're saying, I think they're comparing that with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and saying, this will come out of China. You can actually get this. But um, <laughs> details about it are very limited at the moment. Well, the the, um, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra um, is, is rumoured to be featuring a four-camera setup on the back with a primary one-inch sensor, the Sony IMX989. Mm-hmm. Ted, you know it well, I'm sure. Um, and Which was on the 12S Ultra. Um, but right, there's going yeah. to be uh, other three sensors which they, they don't know too much about. But it looks to be a bit of a behemoth. And I do know that Xiaomi is becoming... Quite a bit more popular here in the look UK. Look at the back of the. Uh, people sorry, are, can you see the the back of that render though? It looks, it just looks so ugly, doesn't it? Not only has it got a great big circular four camera thing sticking out, but that's on the back of a a, a lump on the back of the phone uh, sticking out as already. It just looks so ugly. I hope it doesn't look like that. I, I hope it does, actually. I, I, there is something to be said for whenever you... There, there's ugly cameras on the back of, of phones, and then there's something like this, which is like, I mean business. I'm out here taking the piss with my smartphone camera. I'm going to capture the world in one photograph. And that's what this okay. does. People will know. And, um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. So, Sony is going to make a little $600 point-and-shoot camera for the visually impaired, which is an interesting Oh, we, need, we needed things. Ricky here for this one. We did, yes. But, unfortunately, Ricky um, is, is collecting chickens mm. today. He's, he's gone to... Uh, I can't remember where he said, but he was going to buy some chickens. Perhaps we should keep this until he's here. Because, uh, uh, actually, I was hoping he would explain what what they're doing about what they're doing is is that there's this thing that you can that Sony have made that you kind of bolt around their um, one of their um, compact phones, and it's supposed to people with sight impairments. It's supposed to project the image onto the retina, and so the brain, um, I think, as I understand it, can pick up that data. And people, not completely blind people, I think, but people with sight impairments, um, a bit like Ricky, may be able to get more from taking photographs I, I don't know did you get any more than that from it no I didn't really I was I was really hoping that Richard yeah, would be yeah, able to explain yeah. this to us but because um, it, it does it, it's got some sort of little periscopy type thing that you look mm. into it so it, it does some unusual stuff um, and obviously the technology is beyond us but it sounds very yeah, exciting yeah, we'll hold that probably until he, he's yeah. here we will yes and we'll find out how the chickens are too mm. I think he's going to name one of them Ted. <laughs> so the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 uh, might finally be dust Whoa. resistant, which would be phenomenal if you cast your memory back to whenever the first <laughs> Z Fold came out and all the videos that people were enjoying pulling it apart and finding bits of crumbled digestive down in the mechanism. <laughs> um, they will, they, they've will they sealed it somehow this time. Um, and uh, I guess it's a step toward having a less crunchy experience whenever you close the phone. Well, having said that, I've not had that because I'm very careful. But, yes, some people would. Um, the, the, the way they've done this is really quite simple, is by redesigning the hinge, which also is going to be um, available on the Flip 5, allegedly, um, and mm-hmm. making the thing, the thing flat. So when it closes, unlike my Fold 4, which has got a kind of wedgy shape in the corner... Um, 
the, the, the Fold 5 is going to actually shut flat. And, of course, if it shuts flat, then you're not going to get dust in there. And so Samsung can make it dust-resistant. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all to do with that hinge and how they've managed to do it, which is, yeah, very cool. I wonder, uh, Oppos are dust-free, yeah, aren't yeah, they, they, as well? Oppo yeah. have done the business, and someone else has done one. Is it Was it Huawei? No, not Huawei. Yeah. Huawei, I think. Or Honor. Honor. One of them. They, they've made flat versions as well, so Samsung are on catch-up with, with the others, really. Um but, yeah, I, I, to be honest, it doesn't bother me hugely. But, it, yeah, it's, it's a nice yeah. change. Well, I, I have to say, uh, Samsung are going to be doing a couple of the more, uh, I'd say a little bit bland or minimalist, but a wee bit more exciting, uh, nicely colourful um, phones, uh, which is the Galaxy A23, A34 sorry, and A54. Um, and I, I, I don't know what it is, but I quite like just... The simple design around it, it just, the three little cameras that are sitting there with some popping colours just looks good. I like these designs for the new A34s. I actually prefer them over the, the current design for the Ultra because they are just simple but elegant, beautiful and interesting. The the, um, the A34, <laughs> strangely, is the bigger one and the... 54 yes. is the smaller one. I, I, I like the size of the, the 54 because it's got a 6.4 inch screen and that would do me much better. But but in any other, in every other way, the A34 is a lower spec device with a, a dimensity chipset, for example, and, um, you know, less RAM and just less everything um, and and not so, um, not so forward thinking, if you like, inverted commas. Um, and that's reflected in the price. Um, you know, they're five hundred quid for the A fifty four, and four hundred quid for the A thirty four. At the moment, um, you can't seem to get an A fifty four. Well, not on Amazon UK, but you can get an A thirty four at three nine nine. Um, so yeah. yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else that jumped leapt out at you? Well, the colours are the ones that that really got got me because I I liked my wife has the S twenty. One FE, and it's in a it's in a purpley type violet color, I suppose. But um, where Samsung have put the colors here, there's a lime one, which is yeah, <laughs> piss yellow color, to be honest. <laughs> um, and then there's graphite as well, which is um, I need to go to the doctor because my piss is a bit strange color. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, for a phone, they actually I really like that graphite color. It's bizarre. It's, it's kind of like a bluish hue up at the top and works its way through a bunch of different colours, greens and yellows, and then down to a, a slight orange down in the bottom right-hand corner. It's a nice-looking phone. I, a phone colour. Yeah, I think they're overpriced, though. But then prices are just going yeah. up, aren't they? Um, incidentally, your wife's S21 FE is exactly the same screen size as the A54 at 6.4 inches. So that's that's a really mm. nice size, but dumbed down specs um, compared to your worst phone with these, um, like the not having the AMOLED two X screen, for example, um, no yeah. always on display on the on these two new ones, um, and Gorilla Glass five, which is the one that scratches up to buggery, whereas your wife has got Victus on the front of that. Um, I, 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 I guess you take you pay your money and takes your choice, don't you? But um, the, these are clearly supposed to be lower end devices, even including a micro SD card slot, for example, which we know is lower end. But they're still four and five hundred quid. I think the pricing is wrong. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, as you say, the, the pricing is going up, and then they can they can put exciting colours on these and and still be able to sell them, uh, despite the 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 middling specs that are in there. But I, I do. I really like their 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 choice of lime and graphite. I think <laughs> they're too. Everything quite... is coloured with this, isn't it? You you like the colour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and they've they haven't polluted the colour with with a, a, a horrible graphic or um, graphic <laughs> infographic, <laughs> and with a horrible camera island or anything. Yeah, those three punches there with those 
three little cameras. It just looks neat at the back, really neat. That's what I like about you, your consistency. You just banging on about how nice it was to have camera islands. <laughs> yes, but I can appreciate whenever you don't have camera islands and they're just being neat about it. You either go for minimalist or you go for maximalist. <laughs> Maximum. Maximum list. Yes. Uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. Everything is uh, shaping up, but we're going to have a new one. Uh, it's usually fairly soon, isn't it? It's just after Easter they usually announce it, isn't it? I think it, um, over the years it's been slightly different times each year. And and, and, and actually, the, the, we don't really know anything about the, 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 the Tab S9 series yet. The, the one thing that everyone seems to be saying that they do think they know is that it's going to have um, an IP rating, which apparently, I didn't know this, but it's um, a first for a Samsung Tab device. To be waterproof, mm. so people that want to go down the beach with their tablet, I suppose um, it, it, it should be the thing to do. IP67 has been talked about, um, and yeah, no one knows much about it. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, they're, they're, they're speculating about. Um, and as we said on a previous show, it's going to have um, the, the three sizes still available, the Ultra and the Plus and the, the Baseline one. Um, apart from mm. that, yeah, I, OLED. Oh, yeah, they're talking about the fact that my uh, Samsung Galaxy S8, the baseline one, um, has got an LCD display, which, as I've said before, is absolutely fine. I've no problem with it at all. But they're talking about maybe bringing back OLED for the, that, um, the baseline one, as well as the other ones. Um, so, yeah, uh, and they're also speculating about price, which could be six nine nine, eight nine nine, and one thousand and ninety nine. But, yeah, it, it, this is Android Authority just speculating, really. Yeah, yeah. And then there'll be all sorts of different deals and things like that and combos where you can get this, that, and the other with it with uh, various different overpriced uh, uh, covers and keyboards and all those sorts of things as well. Samsung's always a pain whenever it comes to that because you get yourself a nice new tablet. It's not compatible with the old keyboard, and you have to pay, like, $200 for the old for a new keyboard for it, which is painful. And an pen. And an S Pen. I, I am wondering what way the S Pen is going to work with this as well, because they have played around with different types of S Pens over the years where it sticks to the side or maybe goes inside it, or it's one, what was the S4, had a big black one um, yeah. that was somewhat oversized. The one on the S8, my S Tab S8, is, is, the, is the Bluetooth mm -hmm. version, and it does um, stick on the back to charge. Um, and yeah. so, but it does. It's got all the air gesture thingies and it, and and the camera shutter thingy. So that that's the most advanced one I think at the moment there is. Um, and I'm assuming that it would be really nice if there was a silo for it. You're right. I'd forgotten about that until you mentioned it. If you could stick the thing inside the tablet, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. It's always been such a pain. There's two different. Uh, covers for it and one of them is quite good and the other one's quite good but they're not just not great because you have to remember the the s pens mm. there i think there was even one that relied on just magnets as opposed to having a a silo built into the cover yeah. on one of the generations have you sold your have anyway. you sold your did you have the seven plus didn't you i did yeah yeah i sold right, that ages yeah. ago which i replaced with up uh lenovo oh, and yeah. The Lenovo does everything that I used, to, and I made a, a saving. I figured that was a good idea. I'm just going to stick with a, a cheaper tablet for media consumption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Huawei Galaxy Z Fold Rival. Well, no, so hang on a second, I read that badly. Uh, Huawei's Galaxy Z Fold Rival uh, with satellite connectivity is coming this month. I don't think we'll be seeing it too easily, but it is the Mate X3 that is going to be launched three days ago in China. It looks a bit wider, doesn't mm. it? They're saying it's a um, Z Fold rival, but actually it's not as narrow. So when it's closed up, I think a bit like the Pixel Fold they're talking about and the Oppo, it will be broader than the Samsung devices and not so slim. Um, but th there's no pictures yeah. of this. No one really knows. All they've got to go on is the X2 from the Mate X2 from last year, um, which um, is what they're speculating about. Um, but it does have new graphene-based heat dissipation tech. 
<laughs> so gamers will be very happy. Uh, the the most interesting thing about this now is the fact that it is already launched because it's the twenty sixth oh, right. of March, and the Huawei Mate X three is is available. You can go to the website and see that oh. it's got a slim, lightweight, quad curved foldable ooh, design. Ooh. It's got durable Huawei X true screens. It's got innovative foldable features. It's got ultra vision. X image cameras and it's got a powerful performance with an IPX rated water resistance 4800 milliamp hour battery 66 watt wired and 50 watt wireless supercharging and a low battery energy mode you can use it to gaze into the future not really um, and enhance or and there's elegance enhancements as well there are people posing with it in various different lights shades looking good and wearing strange clothes that looks like one of the uniforms from ufo from jerry anderson which is a bit weird um and uh it's it's 5.3 millimeters squared and it's 239 g to the power of one i don't know what that means grams one uh, it's got two screens to savor uh one of which is an ultra high resolution 2500 and four by 1080 um which works out at a ppi of 426 it's got uh, 440 well, 1440 uh, hertz uh pwm dimming 120 hertz of uh, adaptive refresh rate but then whenever you open up you get a 7.85 inch to the power of 12 uh ultra high resolution to the power of 13 oh no that's that's the citations down the bottom okay gotcha <laughs> to the power of um which is a 2496 by 2224 resolution uh which works out at a ppi of 426 uh, which has the same pwm dimming and 120 hertz of of, uh, of refresh rate have you found um, it yet? Yeah, well, I think I found the page you're on. I'd just like to call out you for having gone fortnightly with this podcast because that Android <laughs> Authority article was dated the 16th of March. So just after we recorded the last show, I must have put that in. And, of course, you're quite right. The, the show has been then on, and I haven't updated myself. I was just trying to do a comparison here with the, the Fold 4, however, because it looks like it's um, slimmer with your our now new knowledge than I thought it was and it is quite like the Fold 4 in that respect um, ok I've got a comparison up in front of me now obviously you don't get any Google Play services as we know Snapdragon 8, Gen, 8 Plus Gen 1 is the same um, Yeah, the, 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 the specs look very very similar actually Oh, there's no. Is there, is there, there is wireless charge? Oh, 50 watt wireless charging. So, oh yeah, and 66 wired. So, the, the, the Fold 4 hasn't got anything like that, and it's got a bigger battery as well. Um, yeah, and it's not for sale in the UK yet, or to the right. UK. You'll have to buy a an import from China. Right. It does look nice though. I, um, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just a shame, isn't it? I such a shame whatever your feelings about the rights and wrongs of of Huawei in China and America and all that for the, us the users i think it's just a shame that we can't get our hands on this stuff yeah yeah well it's ha- it's Huawei's decision oh no it's not it's the decision of the ccp no politics it? allowed yeah nope nope that, that was just a, an abbreviation <laughs> that, that wasn't politics that was just an abbreviation yeah, yeah. Um, oh, there's a flip, there's a smart flip cover as well. This is very Samsung, isn't it? There's a stand cover and a flip cover, and the flip cover looks just like a Samsung one. Good <laughs> grief! All right. Well, you can finish drooling. Um, it, it looks lovely, but we can, we're not going to be able to buy it. So moving on. And Gadget have uh, have done a little article about uh, AI generated images from text, which will not be allowed to be copyrighted in the US, says the government. Uh, which is kind of interesting ruling. Um, <laughs> you can understand both sides of the argument, where you know if someone was to put in a detailed enough description to be able to, to effectively 
create? Well, I'm actually, I'm actually thinking of KFC. Right. With their unique blend of spices that they have to kept, keep secret. They're not only able to copyright that collection, so the collection of words that you put into AI to be able to create a particular image would be the same. So I, I, I agree with the ruling here. But this is just the U.S. There is every chance that somewhere around the world might decide to do the opposite. You know, say, for example, uh, a smaller country like Luxembourg decide, nope, you can copyright AI-generated images here, which means everything will go through Luxembourg so that people can keep their copyright. Yeah, it could happen in anywhere, couldn't it? The, the, the crux of the um, um, decision here is based around the fact that they are saying that um, copyright can protect only material that is the product of human creativity. And they quote the example, the famous case from the last few years, where the monkey in the jungle had taken a selfie. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and they claimed that, that that can't be copyrighted because it wasn't a human being that had done the creating bit. And they're arguing the same thing for this. If it's not human creativity, then you can't copyright it. But you're right. I mean, any other country could do what they like, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's a, a strange mm. thing. Yeah. But um, I, I do say that uh, we should try and keep things as open as possible, especially whenever it comes to this sort of thing. Um, because whenever there's infinite possibilities with AI-generated images, why would you want to copyright one? I can understand uh, copywriting maybe some AI-generated music that you want to use over the title of your podcast or TV show or something like that. But whenever it comes down to something as simple as an image where they they you know, the example that they show in the article here is a... Um, Someone with pink hair, Asian boy, cyberpunk, stadium jacket, manga, and the the image that that creates. I suppose that, that anyone could do that, and you could infringe someone else's copyright by accident because it's a combination of herbs and spices. Yeah, if you drill down to that kind of level, you'd never be able to do anything, would you? This is the yeah. kind of thing that would help me, because in my, with my editor of magazine hat on, every month I have to come up with a new banner picture that sits behind the mm. the um, the headline of the, the top of the front page. And I could then say to one of these smart um, uh, AI assistants, right... It's April, and I want a banner to go across the top. It needs to reflect um, things about April in the UK, so it might come up with, I don't know, rainy scenes, um, or April showers, or blah, 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 whatever it is. And then it, it creates this banner for me. And then I can use it. At the moment, I have to be really careful and tread carefully about not nicking someone's photo when I do that, and and dance around services like Pexel so that I um, make sure that I don't um, get into trouble. So, yeah, that that's good for me if I can use AI-generated images and not have to worry about that anymore. Excellent. Well, yes, but say, for example, you were to create one that you thought was absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, fantastic, and people were to start noticing, going, oh, look at that image that, that's on there. And then they were to start using it on their product yeah. as well. And their product suddenly becomes a wee bit more exciting. Maybe maybe um, Tim Salmon has set up a uh, the same magazine as you. What's yours? The, 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 the Village Valley Reporter Diary. or something? Oh no, the Village Reporter. I'm setting that up, <laughs> and I'm going to start using your imagery on yeah, it as yeah. well. Well, personally, it wouldn't bother me. But if you, but if you, yes, if you were trying to start a business and make a living from it, I do get your point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. So there's yeah. a problem. Problems. 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 All right, moving on to non-problem related problems. Uh, we have the uh, a rather cheap rugged tablet. It's been a while since we've talked about rugged tablets, <laughs> yeah, has it yeah. not? Um, this is the Uliphone Armor Pad. Ted, oh do yeah, tell the, us the, about the thing that attracted me about this was this whacking great big strap <laughs> kickstand thingy on the back, which looks oh, absolutely yeah. great. So this is a basically, I mean, Uliphone is the same as. Blackview and and Doogie and all the rest of them, you know, don't don't rely on any <laughs> updates. And you can only buy this in China or via AliExpress anyway. And it's a basic 
tablet it really is but it's but it's kind of rugged and it's got um you know uh, the usual things you'd expect from a, a rugged cheap chinese tablet but the point is that it's made of really thick plastic and it's got this um, super IP rating, IP69 no less, which I think the, the 69K deals with um, chemical environments or something, or heat, or I can't remember, there's something that the K means, um, probably heat. But the interesting thing here is that it comes, I think, does it come bundled with it, or do you have to buy it separately? No, $20 more. And, and it's got this yeah. thing that is like a strap on the back, and it, you clack it around the thing, and it's also a stand. It looks absolutely brilliant. Why don't other manufacturers make stuff like that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's a dinky size as well. So that hand strap thingy, when it's not a stand, um, will do the job to be able to hold the thing as well. I really like that. It's, it's a really neat bit of cheapo design. <laughs> It is, yeah. It's it's someone who's who's taken the initiative and, and designed something that people need. They they've maybe spoken to people on building sites or whatever and said, "What would make this better?" And they've got oh, something to yeah. hold it with, you know. And and you know, you're you're wearing gloves, big dirty gloves, um, holding the side of a tablet. You have to be careful. Yeah, and stand it up so we can watch our YouTube on our on on our coffee break. <laughs> so that 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 stand looks as though it, it clips in and out of the back. I don't know that for true for sure, but it looks like it does. So you can have the strap or pull the stand out as well. Um, and it's also yeah. got the Nokia XR20 style um, red SOS button thingy, which I, I guess is going to be assignable to what you want. Looks really nice, actually. Hmm. It's a shame it's low end. <laughs> Let's have a, a high end one of these. <laughs> well, I suppose, yeah. yeah. Well, if, if this was the sort of thing that suddenly becomes popular um, because it's it's practical and useful. Uh, we might start seeing it a bit more yeah, often. Pretty nice. Well done, Uli mm. phone. Well, um, it's a bike time we talk about <laughs> rugged tablets because we've got another well, that's one. That's another one. Uh, <laughs> the Ukitel. 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 Ukitel? Ukitel. Something we'll like go that. RT2, which is the world's most powerful <laughs> rugged tablet, has been announced and it should be coming in on September 19th, mm. which is, what, six Good months away? Me. Yeah, we're getting ahead of it, but we're excited about this because it sounds like a be-all and end-all of rugged tablets, and we need never discuss them again because this is going to be the rugged it for the, the rugged future. tech addict show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this has a ten point one full HD plus display, a thirty three watt fast charger, dual immersive speakers, sixteen megapixel uh, rear and front cameras. A twenty thousand milliamp hour battery, which is up to nine hundred hours. Huge wow. battery, they say. Uh, it runs the MediaTek MT eighty seven eighty eight, and it's got IP sixty eight, Android twelve, which by September will be old. Um, eight gigabytes of RAM, one hundred twenty eight gigabytes of ROM, dual SIM slots. That seems to tick most of the boxes and then excel at some. And that's the way to put together an infographic. <laughs> yeah, it's actually got IP69K, the same as the other one. But it's also got a mil standard as well, a military standard rating of 810H, oh, yeah. which makes it a bit more rugged, I suppose. But it hasn't got a, a, a bat holder on the back and a kickstand. <laughs> so No, but I suppose you could glue something on. <laughs> 20,000 milliamp hour battery, though. That would just go for days on end, wouldn't it? Wow. It does have a, a handle does on it? the back. Yeah, scroll oh, down. <clears throat> There's a strappy oh, type yeah. thing that goes between two oh, hinges yeah. on the back. But do you think they're the same company as Ulyphone? No, because it's a very, very different style mm. device. Or um, handle, too. I, the, the, this yeah. works. Um, we do have to wait a long time in order to get it, so it's hardly worth getting excited about. And there's every chance that it could be cancelled in a, between there's, or there's buy the specs there's a, there's diminished. There's a buy now button at the top, and if you click through, you can buy it now. <laughs> um, EU, global, North America. Let's Right, the EU one, it says you can buy now. And... For 260 pounds. 260 quid. And the, if you go to the global version... 
It's 285 And you can buy... Maybe it was last yeah, September. Yeah, perhaps it was. This thing's a year old, this article. <laughs> Six months old. <laughs> wow, OK. Oh, dear. That's very funny. Right, let's see. Oh, let's right. see. Yeah, September 23, so the first comment. Um, no, those... Uh, have we gone into some sort of time zone? Some... Have we... we uh, yeah, that comment was made on the 3rd of September 2023. Exactly. What's going on? Uh, maybe the... Hang on a second. The the, t- the clocks went it's forward. <laughs> maybe they went forward a full year. A ti- we're in a time warp, aren't we? Warp up. Right, go back to the original... The original. <coughs> hang on, I'm going to check the lottery results and print them out quickly. <laughs> for the last year. I don't get any of this. I don't, I don't understand it. No. What, what year it is, but it seems like you can buy it. And it, it's not even that that's the 9th of the 3rd, 2023, because down at the bottom, there's the 1st of the 31st, 2023. There's not 31 months. You can buy it on Amazon year. UK as well. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is available. Amazon UK, 314 quid, less £30 voucher, and you can buy it now. So, yeah, that that must be last year, September, I reckon. Right, okay. And and if you order it now, does it arrive this year or last year? Um, (laughs) Yeah, or the year after. Uh, Yeah. Well, now we're out of that time vortex, we'll just move on to something a bit more sensible. Uh, I shouldn't have added that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh, there's now a malicious chat GPT already, uh, Chrome extension, uh, that can hijack your Facebook account. Uh, which, um, yeah, if if you want to do a wee bit of um, AI uh, text creation, there was a Chrome extension that was released uh, that allowed you to use Google's one, which is the chat. Ch- no, Google's one was called Bard. Bard, yes. Uh, chat GPT was one of the first ones that arrived and, and proved that it was possible to do this. So they bundled it together. Uh, into a Chrome extension, uh, and some nefarious source decided to extract Chrome information out of it. And uh, maliciously sponsored search engine results would pop up as well inside your browser too. I've got a tickle at the back of my throat. Ted, do carry um, on. This was tied up <coughs> with um, access to um, Facebook accounts. Um, it, apparently, if you installed this extension to Chrome, then you, it, it could go and scoop up malicious code designed to steal Facebook session cookies. Now, I'm not sure what people are going to do with Facebook session cookies, but they, they say that once stolen, the cookies are encrypted, exfiltrated, providing threat actors with on-demand access to the compromised accounts to which they change the login details in order to lock the legitimate user out. So they could actually lock a Facebook user out of their own account and then presumably go in and then use whatever is set up in the Facebook account. Anyway, the news here is that um, Google have fixed this and they've removed the extension. So all of what we just said is out of date, a bit like that tablet we just mentioned. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm not okay. better. I'll carry on on my own then. So, um, yes, um, presumably this story has now died a death because it doesn't happen. Except that it could in future happen and it might happen. So keep your eyes open and hopefully Google will sort out their Chrome extension so that they can't be attacked and knackered by people that are going to cause a threat to people. Um Yes, it, well, I'd say that Google is is putting out fire after fire at the moment whenever it comes to hacking. Um, I don't know if, if you're aware that Linus Tech Tips was hacked just the other day. Um, someone used one of his... Uh, you know, you are aware of Linus Tech Tips. Yeah, right? yeah, I, I saw the story go through, but it didn't mean much to me. You, you tell us all about it. Okay, uh, well, they, they used uh, session tokens... Uh, to be able to hack into his YouTube account and remove all of his videos and put in new videos, well, um, well change the the channel branding somehow to Tesla, and uh, and, and push people's uh, web browsers toward a Bitcoin purchasing right. scam, uh, which was which was 
I suppose kind of funny, but uh, Linus and his his dear wife were up all night sorting it out, and eventually it worked out that it was it was more kind of the way that YouTube and Google used their session tokens and made it quite easy for people to hack and for them to work out exactly what way people were hacking. And it wasn't a case of just changing your password or your two-factor authentication. They worked fine. It was the session tokens, which um, I think Linus uh, described it as, instead of having just one big door in, there were lots of, there were like 20 smaller doors, and one of his staff who were able to gain access to the website they had lost access but he was looking to see you know uh, how to secure the whole thing without realizing that the session cookies were were the problem so now they've gone into that they've dug down um and hopefully google and youtube are learning a lot from that and how that can be well uh, dealt with in the futures to make it a bit more secure but you know that combined with Chrome extensions. Chrome extensions are a nightmare. I, I I I'm reluctant to install them entirely because you just hear horror stories of Chrome extensions. It, it's unbelievable that Google has this whole ecosystem going that Chrome extensions can be built. <laughs> they should just get rid of them entirely um, because I don't think there's anything that's particularly useful anymore about them because they're. They're so easy to hack or so easy to change after a while whenever, as we mentioned at the start of the show, uh, the likes of uh, U-Origin, if they suddenly decide, oh, well, we're not making any money now, let's change. And everyone who has the Chrome extension, all their information is going to be uploaded now and, 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 and sold to the highest bidder because of what Google's done. Yeah, they need to fix it, don't they? I do find um, some yeah. of these... Um, extensions useful however one of them I use all the time is fit to wits fit to wits um, so if someone sends you an email in in, Google, in Gmail and the picture that they embed in the, 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 the text in amongst the text is huge then your mm. your screen just goes far too wide and it's really annoying because you then have to scroll left and right to see what's going on or oh, unless you've got a really wide monitor I suppose and there's this uh, this extension yeah. called Fit to Width, and you just click on that, and it shrinks the picture into the size of your browser. And that that I I use that on a daily basis, and I'd really miss that if that mm. was gone. Um, they're, they're kind of like widgets, really, aren't they? That they they need to be they need to be secured up to be, as you say, to be useful. Yeah, uh, they they do. I think um, Google need to have some sort of vetting process. Um, a bit like they have with Google Play to ensure, well, Google Play is a, uh, a, a wretched hive of scum and villainy um, whenever you start drilling down um, and you, you can get caught out in Google Play as well. It's difficult, very, very difficult, and they just they, they need to have some something else entirely to, uh, to secure and make it easy for people to trust extensions and bits and pieces indeed they do <laughs> yes yes anyway we're not going to be able to solve anything here because well i'm a moron and Me too. Uh, google don't listen to you terribly often okay ctl has launched a new special edition chromebook that has a see-through chassis mm. uh, this is a great idea you know there, there was a lot of people who uh, really liked the idea of having say a wallpaper on your phone that showed the internals of your yeah. phone I had I rocked one of those for quite some time. Um, now they're actually bringing that over to having devices that have semi-transparent uh, coverings over them, and we're getting a Chromebook with that too. Ted, do tell but us. that's it, really. I mean, that's the story. Um, oh. What the people that are making this are saying that it will really help people, apart from it being the the kind of cool thing to be able to see the internal workings of your device from an administrative standpoint having a clear bottom cover makes it easy um, to quickly see if something may be amiss inside the, the device you can quickly glance to see if there's moisture in size or if a ribbon cable has become unseated for example so repairs um, are easier to identify and so forth but for me no it just looks cool i want i want one of those on all of my devices <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it would be quite cool, but um, sometimes I've, I've, I do remember having a, 
I had something that had trans plastic transparency on it, and it it got grubby because it was a type of plastic that you know the oils on your hands and things like that gradually faded it, and it started looking a bit mucky. I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was my uh, my Game Boy. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, I had a, a see through Game Boy, and it it does it doesn't look as good as it did when it was first launched. But then nothing can, especially after forty years of of being handled day and daily to play Tetris. Um, the, the my Game Boy Advance, it, it, it's 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 grubby now and looks poor. Right. It needs to be buffed right. up. Yeah, mm. the inherent dangers. Yes, <sighs> right. In the name of the game. I'm going to mention two words here, and Ted's going to get excited. Whoa! Angry Birds. <laughs> That's blown all the audio out. <laughs> the audience is now deaf. What about Angry Birds? Well, you're going to be able to play it on your desktop, because soon enough we're going to be getting Google, P- Google Play Games for mm. PC. No, it's not available in the UK just yet, but uh, it is in the US, and I believe that people are using it in the US as well. Uh, and it, it provides you with a, a desktop environment for you to play those Android games that you love so much. Ted, will you be adopting this one? Angry Birds arrives? will work really well on a big PC screen, I have to say. You'd be able to see the whole... One of the things about Angry Birds on smaller devices is you can't see the you, the flinging bit and the target big enough often depending on the the the, the actual um the, the the scene that you're doing but um angry birds will work really well on the big screen the we were talking off air before we recorded about the fact that luna amazon luna is apparently now just about available in the uk breaking news in case no one else knows this breaking <laughs> news on tech addicts luna is available in the uk amazon luna and um, we reckon that this was going to be pretty much the same as that, to be honest, except it's Google's version of it, um, and Amazon have got their Luna. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I don't know what Garena Free Fire is, do you? No. No. Okay, so um, there are some games coming to Google Play Games, and it will... I, when I click through to it, it just says, you know, coming soon, we'll let you know when you can play it. But if you had a VPN or something, I suppose you could do it. Uh, I suppose, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I had a go with it earlier, and I worked. I found that it worked with uh, the keyboard and mouse. The, the Amazon one. I was able to. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Luna. Um, and I, I, I wasn't able to quit out of it effectively. I had to crash oh, into the yeah. browser because I don't know the controls just yet. But, uh, yeah, Luna will be interesting once it arrives. I, I don't see people getting too excited about it. If... Google can't get Stadia to rock the world. <laughs> I don't think Amazon's going to be able to get Luna to um, really catch right. on. Great. It is nice that they're giving away a few to Amazon, or a few games to Amazon Prime subscribers. Well, it, w- it may be significant that we, neither of us knew that, that, that it was available. I, we just thought it was a, in the US. Mm. And they've obviously really quietly launched it and not talked anyone. Well... Maybe the game, the, the hard yeah. gaming community know about it, but the, then the hard gaming community wouldn't be interested in Luna, would they? <laughs> no, it, it did eke out like a fart at a funeral. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, well, let's just leave that comparison uh, in people's minds. Amazon, Luna, fart nice. at a funeral. Right. Go Retroid has unveiled the Retroid Pocket Flip. Um, Go the, the Retroid Pocket Flip. Three, I think, is one of the top thought of retroid gaming or retro gaming devices uh, to be able to play emulators and classic games on the go. Uh, I very nearly bought one, but I ended up going with the Ambernec uh, 353M instead, which I absolutely adore because of its aluminium frame and, and case and things like that. It's excellent, absolutely excellent. A wee bit small for my big hands, but. Um, uh, 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 oh, <laughs> the uh, with Go Retroid now talking about doing a Nintendo. I, I'd say it's more of an advance. It, it's or maybe no, it's, it is. Yeah, it's, no, it's it's wide like the the yeah, DS. Yeah, yeah, but the DS has got the the screen on the bottom as well. This has not. 
Yeah, the, 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 the DSI. DSXL. Or, was it? Um, there was one of them that just had that didn't have a. Was no, there? You're, you're, okay. you're right. No, I'm thinking more of the GP32s and all those sorts of things. The uh, Pandoras okay. and stuff like that. They were other gaming devices over the years. But yes, this only has one yeah. big screen on it, uh, and it, it should prove to be quite a comfortable fit. Uh, obviously, Nintendo is a tried and tested um, model for for this device. Oh dear, that's my. my you see, the, the, my do not disturb is on, and it just doesn't work. Thank you, Samsung. Do not disturb is switch. No, it's not. It's turned off. So, why has my just before we recorded, I put my do do not disturb on on my Fold Four. You you heard me do it, and then it's off again. Why has it turned itself off? Stupid Samsung. It's been two hours, maybe. Has it? No, it hasn't. No, it's only... Yeah. Has it? Well, maybe you've only got it set for a oh, certain amount of time. Oh, perhaps it is just over the two hours. Yeah, maybe. You, you could be right. I'll take it back. Well done, Samsung. We do babble. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Anyway, uh, th- this is a really good-looking uh, tried-and-test design, and with uh, with um, uh, Go Retroid uh, adding their brilliance to it, uh, I really reckon this will be a very, very nice thing. There's a size comparison between the DS Lite and the new 3DS XL, and it does sit just nicely in between. It's maybe closer in size to the DS Lite, which is the one I had and I loved, but it has some uh triggers uh there's there's uh, the expanded triggers so the ds light tri- um triggers on the top left and right were a wee bit disappointing this has expanded those and it's got dual triggers as well i think from what i can tell from these renders yeah yeah it does uh yeah, l and yeah. r and uh r1 mm-hmm. and r2 yeah uh so it, it's a it's a gorgeous looking device i'm i'm very excited about this um, it's come at the wrong time because I still have my Ambernick RG three five three M, which I'm loving. You, you see that? You see You're going to get one. The three D S XL, the bottom one in that um, comparison. That's the one yes. I've got, and that's the one that I've got uh-huh. both screens on, and it um, is significantly bigger because it's got the bottom screen going on there having said that the bottom screen is is a bit dumb in many ways because it's very it's a capacitive a touch screen and you've got to use your fingernails to make it work because it's sorry not not capacitive it's res, it's resistive touch screen and you've got to use the, the stylus in the from the silo to use it and frankly i hardly ever used it so this could work indeed um those corners, though, where the the two trigger buttons are, they're a bit lumpish, aren't they? It's not very sleek, is it? I, I think those will be very comfortable, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, I, I I do remember. I've had a couple of DSs in my time, and and you're absolutely right. There there was two screens on all of them, dating back to the original right. one, um, and the DS Lite was the one that I used predominantly. Um, and we do have a, a 3DS XL somewhere in the house as well because we bought the limited edition one. I think Hannah has a green, it's like a Legend of Zelda one thing. Uh, but, you know, it, it it was really comfortable as well, but it missed that slope to the, to the trigger buttons. And I think this adding in the extra trigger buttons so that you'll be able to effectively emulate uh, bigger systems uh, the likes of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1, um, you'll need both trigger buttons. So they've, they've put those on here, and I reckon that the angle that they're at will make this a lot more comfortable to use than the DS was right. for bigger hands like yours okay. and mine. So, yeah. yeah, And I, I, I'd like to say they said it's going to be able to emulate up to around about the GameCube level and uh, some of the lighter PS2 titles, uh, which I would be quite happy Is to see. Is it going to come with a SD card stacked with a thousands of games? Probably depending on which variant mm. you buy. You'll be able to buy it without the SD card, but uh, there will be some places, I'm sure, that do yeah. it with, with the DS. Mm. Um, you have to be careful with those, where they advertise, say, 100,000 games. Um, a lot of them might be duplicates or you'll get something like maybe it'll do the turbo graphics and the super graphics and put all the turbo graphics games in with the super graphics and say 
Yeah, because there's only five games on the Super Graphics, but there'll they'll be yeah, a thousand yeah, yeah. games sitting there, and they'll go, no, 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 there's, yeah, there's a thousand. He is. Uh, moving on to Netflix. I have actually been playing a Netflix uh-huh. game re- uh, recently. Um, into the Dark or Into the Dead or something like that, where you run through a field and you get you have to shoot zombies <laughs> along the way. It's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> um, but I figured, uh, why not? Yeah, it's there. It's free. I'll make use of it. May as That's well. That's the first. Is, is uh, that the even first time you've used it? Because you, before you were saying you you weren't interested at all. No, no. But I, I, I remember playing the first one, the first version of this Into the Dead, or I can't remember what it was called. I don't have my phone in front of me. Um, the, and it, it, it had ads in it, which really hacked me off. And you had to watch the ads to get coins to be able to expand your weaponry. And I just gave up at that because I'm, I'm not there to do that. I'm there to play the game, get good at the game, and then re- they can reward me when I get good at the game. Whereas this, because it's paid for by Netflix, uh, you the better you do in the game, the more gold you get. So you're inclined to do better in the game rather than, than cheat to win. Sorry, pay to win. Um, yeah, so Netflix are planning to bring roughly 40 more games to... Uh, to this year i vaguely remember us doing a story like this once before where they had another amount before the end of the year right so maybe they still got a bunch to go but uh one of them oh oh wow recognizable titles teenage mutant ninja turtle shredder's revenge i bought that on the playstation 5 recently that's an excellent right. game i would love them to be able to uh, be able to play that on a bigger screen i don't think that's going to work particularly well with on-screen controls but uh, that, that, if that's the level that they're looking at, then these could be some good big games, and it'll really hit Google Play subscription model hard because Google Play subscription models okay. You can generally find something to play, but it's it's always a slightly lesser version of something else that's available. Uh, this having a big A list game like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I suppose um, it will work quite well on a tablet or a or a big screen. That this whole Netflix thing. But when I when I try yes. to play games on my phone, in in a candy bar phone on a candy bar phone, um, it, it just it just feels a bit crap, frankly. Um, a bit like Mario Kart for mobile, which is all upright and stupid. It needs to be done in landscape. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got a ta- an, an Android tablet going with um, Netflix signed in, I can see how that could work quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just have, they've got 70 games in development, and 40 of them are going to arrive mm-hmm. this year. One of them includes Oxenfree 2. I quite liked Oxenfree 1. I think I've got it on Steam, was it? Yeah. I played it a good bit, but I never got the whole way through yeah. it. So they they are they're targeting bigger names and maybe slightly more quality games than just some of the yeah. crap. It's interesting that they they are pursuing this. I don't know that it it really brings much to the idea of their subscription model. I don't I don't, I, I, I don't know anyone who's ever discussed these outside of you and I. No, no, nor do I. No, it certainly isn't anything that's mentioned in our MeWe group or any of the um, MeWe groups that we are involved with. No, you're the only person I've ever discussed this with. Odd. Bizarre. Well, maybe they're just making it for you and I. Mm. How nice. And that's mm. why they're they're picking two games that I'm excited with. Oxen Free 2 and The Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which is fun. I remember playing that in the arcades when I was younger. Excellent. And with a controller on the on the uh, tablet, yeah, okay. I've got my Stadia controller. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll mm. work with that. I'm happy. Nice one, Netflix. Well done. You pleased me today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, flap your trap about an app. First up, we have the Windows screenshot tool. If you've dared to use it, might be sending a little bit more information than you had originally thought you were sending. Ted, can you tell us about this? I it's been it. fixed. I use um, the Windows Screenshot tool all the time. Um, it, it's a really handy tool in my armory um, to take um, uh, clips from screenshots and stuff. Anyway, um, 
the the news of this though that Microsoft has now fixed this error, but somebody was proving that if they took a, a screen, use the screenshot tool to to take a um, a, a picture, a JPEG, and then they um, cropped it and then resaved it and then used it wherever, all the data that was in the JPEG file, which they thought they'd cropped out, was actually still in the JPEG file. So, I mean, you'd have to be a super nerd to, to uh, take advantage of this. And it was it was a kind of uncovering by a, a kind of um, geeky um, hacker person, I think. Um, but anyway, Microsoft had fixed it now, so I don't even know why we mentioned it. <laughs> well, I, th- I, th- I do think it's quite important. I would use this in work, and this could be devastating, right, yeah. uh, given some some of the the personal information that has been used there. I, I use ShareX at home because I think it's just it's fully featured and just a better solution than than this. Sni- I I always called it the sniping tool just for fun, um, but. Uh, the snipping tool is, is is it's always been it's straightforward, I suppose, but it's been lacking uh, functionality. Uh, and and if this has been happening to stuff that I've been sending in work, then that could be a big problem. Yeah. Have you seen that they called it the Acropolis vulnerability, <laughs> the Acropolis? <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, uh, yes. Right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll get to see what an interesting feedback or fallout happens here. That'll be fun. Well, they I reckon suppose. they fixed it now, so it shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, there might be still data out there that shouldn't be. Yes. Well, um, I'm, I am one person who is always telling people who who give off about uh, how Amazon's plus or Amazon Prime is not good value for money to look into the stuff that they are getting from it um, because there's there's actually a lot more than just free postage and packaging and TV. Uh, there's a huge amount of stuff, but I always forgot about uh, the fact that they give you a selection of magazines every month as well. Not It's not the same magazines over and over again. It's various different ones trying to encourage you to subscribe to them. It doesn't seem to have worked, and I myself, I think, in the last year, have completely forgotten about it as well. But it looks like Amazon is going to continue or discontinue newspaper and magazine subscriptions in September, and I think that will probably impact the free selection that they they give away each month to the Amazon Prime readers. If indeed they still do that, come to think of it, I didn't check beforehand if they still do. Um, oh, it does say there, actually, Amazon is trying to convince publishers to submit their newspapers and magazines uh, to Prime Reading or Kindle Unlimited. But it remains to be seen uh, if this will happen. OK, so, well, there's there's possibility that things could change um, in the future, but it looks like it, they're going to discontinue newspaper and magazine subscriptions altogether because people are moving away from newspapers and magazines. It's, a bit, it's you know, it was one last hurrah. It is nice to have a physical magazine to sit down and buy. It's also nice to have a an e-copy of it as well and a tablet that you can sit down and read. But I don't think people do that terribly often with news aggregators and various websites that are very accessible and things on the go. Ted, will, will this affect you? No, at all? I didn't use it. But um, I did use Google Play um, Books, um, which had a newsstand mm. in it, and they shut that down. Google shut that down about, I don't know, 10 years ago, probably. Um, but but I'm still <laughs> amazed to see that if I go into that, um, I bought um, some copies of some magazines where, very early on, well over 10 years ago. And it's interesting to see that they're still there. So that you can't buy any new stuff from Google Play Books, a newsstand or whatever it's called, but all of the stuff that I bought still there. I can still download it, read it, access it. Mm-hmm. They've not taken it away. So it'll be interesting to see what Amazon do with that. Um, and if you bought stuff in the past, if they do the decent thing like Google did and let people still access it um, or, or refund people. Because, it, I mean, it might be a periodical or a magazine, but it's, you've still bought it, haven't you? And that's a, just a bit off. You're quite right. They're trying to get people to um, buy into Kindle Unlimited. 
and then they'll roll out some of these, or if they can convince the publishers on board with it, they'll roll out some of them. One of the issues is that the Kindle Unlimited is not available worldwide, um, and only in some countries, which is a bit of a, a downer mm. as well. So, yeah, interesting, but I'd like to see if what they do with people that have paid up good money for, not for... An, a rolling subscription, but also, but if they've actually bought a magazine, you know, say, right, here's this month's, um, whatever it is, Time magazine, and I've bought it, and I should own the right to what, to, to be able to access, it, like, like Google have done. I won't keep saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> well, you've actually got me interested now, because I'm, I'm working my way through Amazon to try and find... I did buy a number of magazines, one-off magazines, yeah. not... Subs well, I don't know if I subscribed. I might have subscribed. I think it did through Google Play and Newsstand. I subscribed as well. There we go, magazines. Uh, I remember buying a couple of issues of Starlog because they had articles I really wanted well, to read. Well, in Google Play, uh, good books. In, in, oh, in Amazon. Amazon. Sorry, right. So I'm just looking to see if they're still there. I, I can't see them initially, but I'll, I'll, I'll do a deep dive later on to see if okay. I can find them. So uh, Screen Copy 2.0 is adding audio support, so you'll be able to uh, mirror your Android screen uh, on your yeah, PC. Are you, are you listening? Dan, you are you this? listening, Microsoft? This is one of my big um, complaints about the um, phone link, or whatever it's called these days, link to Windows, is that you, you unlike DeX, you don't get um, throughput of audio. And they just Microsoft just don't seem to be wanting to fix it. Um, they want to just leave it out and not include it. Now, here's a... Um, open source um, uh, screen copy it's called without the vowels in it um, and you know they're, they're just a, a, a voluntary startup thingy if you like um, who have put audio through so if you if you mirror your android screen onto your onto your computer you get the audio put through why can't microsoft do that with all their money and depth and and developers and blah 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 just do it microsoft Okay, um, I think um, they're listening. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, and I, I think it, it's really disappointing that things don't work as you would expect them to work. Whenever it comes to all of those um, screen mirroring technologies across the board, you know, it's it's a bit it's very inconsistent between platforms. It is, but you'd think that Microsoft would be onto that, particularly as everyone else around them, you know, Microsoft, um, Motorola, Ready for. De Dex as well. Also, the, the the start the starting out of the BBK group, the Oppo and OnePlus and the Realmes and all that. They've got a um, utility that that y you can hook up to your computer, and sure enough, the audio works. You can push your audio through to your PC speakers. But no, not phone link or um, link to computer or whatever it's called. <laughs> no, they're just still not doing it, and I just don't get it. I don't know why they don't. I can understand that they want to keep it as a Bluetooth wireless service and not a wired one. But even so, they could still do the audio. You wouldn't want to do the um, you wouldn't want to do the video because there'd too be there'd be latency and all the rest of it. So if they really don't want to cable your device up, then okay. But they can still do audio for music. Get on to it, Microsoft. I'm just noticing, man. I don't think mine's actually installed at the moment. Very wise. Yeah. I, I, I've never noticed. <laughs> anyway. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this was really dinky and lovely. I, I, I really enjoyed this video uh, that we're going on to talk about now. Uh, the Oppo Find N2's flip uh, cover display has the cover screen OS that turns the display into a mini phone. Now, this is the, the flip, not the fold, but the flip. Um, and you can access pretty much all of your phone's features via the screen on the front, which is echo, I think the word is. Uh, uh, Diddy is another one that I heard, but that also was a an areola-type uh, word, too. Um, and uh, Localization, I suppose. Uh, but it, it's tiny, this little tiny screen that allows you to do most of your stuff on your phone without having to go through the anguish of opening your phone. 
Ted. What yeah, yeah. I, I've tried Cover Screen OS on my Flip 3, my um, Samsung Galaxy Flip 3. Oh. Um, and it's just really, really limited because you just don't have enough space on the screen. With the N2, um, Oppo's Find N2 Flip, yeah, you've got much more space. And I can see that it will work much better and give you more space. With the forthcoming Samsung um, Flip 5 and the um, full screen on the Motorola um, next generation Flip, that will be even better. You'll be able to make all this work. So Cover Screen OS is a good app, a good um, thing from in the Play Store. I suggest that people install it. Um, but just beware that if you install it on a... Um, a current flip phone you'll just get a really crap experience and I took it off again very quickly but yeah good idea well done to them yeah yeah quite right I think this looks cool and that would be something to make me think about actually moving toward a flippy foldy yeah. type phone yeah cool uh, Chrome Corner Ted do take us through what's happening oh, yeah. in Chrome Corner um, Chrome OS 111 which you might have if you've got on the developer channel or if you put on part of the beta channel some of it there are a few things the the fast pair bluetooth support which i spoke about earlier so i won't do that again but yeah the fast pair should be working um the text app for anyone that uses it gains keyboard shortcuts that didn't have that before so that's a bit like your kind of word pad on windows but for chrome os um and that has now got you know control v and control c and all that stuff all working nice um nicely um there's print job tracking which means that if you do still use a printer and you live in 1990 then you'll be able to track what's being printed where and um oh no actually i might have misread that is that um yeah yeah i think it is um and yeah. steam gaming um is um i thought that was already available is that not available yet have you tried that uh only if you have the uh, oh, what's it? Boolean? No. Um, there's a thing beginning with B. I can't remember. It's been a couple of months since I've checked. Right. You've got to have a particular th flag available that's only available oh, okay. on certain ones. So that's coming anyway. So some changes to Chrome OS 111 if you've got that. Um, Google launches the Pixel Superfans program in the UK, UK. And if you got in in that window when you could register, which I did, <laughs> good for you, because the next day they stopped it, because I don't know why they stopped it. They haven't said why they've stopped it. I, I, don't, I don't really um, understand. As a result of this, I look back at the Pixel Superfans programme in my email, and in 2021, so two years ago, I've got emails saying, you're in the Pixel Superfans programme now. And I'd completely forgotten that, and so nothing ever came of it. This is the program where people are supposed to get early access to hardware in some cases, um, but all, but certainly software and newsletters and blah blah blah. It's all a bit of a kind of um, PR thing, really. But anyway, that that was open for about twenty four hours and then closed again. Um, Google is adding generative AI to Docs and Gmail to help you get started writing. Well, I'm not sure how up-to-date this is, given that Bard that we spoke about earlier is now out there, but um, they're going to be putting these specific tools into Docs and Gmail um, so that you can... Um, you know, tell it to um, write you something inside those um, specific applications and not just going to Bard to do it, if you like, or any other chat GPT um, thing. Google Contacts um, is going to be reworked on tablets, and I have that working now. I can see mm. that happening. So you've got the whole Material U layout on the left-hand side. All works really well. Um, opened up with new tabs, um, images of your contacts. That all works really well. I'd like to see that working on the web in Chrome as well. Please, Google, because that, that whole interface on the tablet works really, really well. Um, mm. And the Google, lastly, the Google Drive um, has got... Uh, the, the, the is going to have the tablet redesign as well. So in, inside Drive, you should be able to get that navigation rail on the left as well. That's not working for me on tablet at the moment, um, nor on my Fold phone, so I can't report on that. Um, and, oh yeah, the one thing I wanted to also say while we're in Chrome Corner, 
is the annoyance. I don't know if you find this, but there's a real annoyance with Chrome OS with two in one units. So I was playing with that um, that Lenovo Duet thingy this week, and then. Mm-hmm. When you put the keyboard, you clack the magnetic keyboard onto it, you get the desktop layout with the taskbar and all the lovely stuff, and you can do what you like with it, pretty much. Um, But as soon as you take the keyboard off, you get back to this kind of iPad-style, you know, big buttons all over the screen type layout, which I don't want. I want to be able to do it in a dex-type mode all the time. But I can't find a way. I don't know if you know about this issue, but... in order to force it into desktop mode all the time, whether the keyboard's on there or not, I, I can't make it do it. And I don't think Chrome OS does it on two-in-ones. Um, mind you, you haven't got a two-in-one, have you? No, no, but I, I, I have used it in desktop mode just, just to have a play with it. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't, I've never thought about actually it defaulting to one as opposed to yeah, the other. it does. Very annoying. Mm. So, thank you. Maybe there's going to be an app that comes out, which is uh, desktop mood all the time. Yeah, yeah, it might. Well, that that would be, and, and there may be something out there. There might be a, a Chrome um, flag or something that makes that happen. But I, but I haven't, I couldn't find one. I couldn't see it. So, if anyone knows how to do that, anyone, please let me know. I want to take the keyboard off and leave it in desktop mode and not go to the stupid yeah. tablet mode. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Can't even think what the tablet mode looks like these days. Well, it's got a taskbar across hmm. the bottom, and um, you've got the apps in a, a thing on the left, in the left corner. But, it, but the, the 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 thing is that it instantly changes. Is that you see that the big buttons come all over the screen. The whole of the desktop becomes just like an iPad, just like big chunky buttons all over the all, all over the screen. I don't want that. Thank you. Clear off. I'll just use Dex and ignore <laughs> Chrome OS. <laughs> Fair enough. That's the best yeah. way forward then. All right, hark back time where you're going to talk about the Volkswagen Sirocco. <laughs> the, the Nokia 8 Sirocco, um, very briefly, um, because it was just so gorgeous. I love this phone and I still hail it as the most beautifully designed. I used to call it the Ladro phone, my Ladro phone, because it was just. Ladro, Ladro, as in the you know the the the, the fine oh. the fine art making yeah, China yeah. thing yeah. because Ladro um, creations are so beautiful and this phone um, I kind of aligned with that. Um, I've never seen a more gorgeously designed piece of tech. Frankly, it's stylish and classy. It's it's almost jewellery um, and it, very very nice indeed. Anyway, this was um, we're talking about mid. 2018 so obviously this is well out of date now it just had these side the the glass curved around the edge but not in the way that samsung did it it was done very subtly and it made it very very classy because the backs came round um to meet the sides and the sides were almost razor sharp and the very thin um, buttons on the edges that you had and it, it just you think you don't want to case it because it's it's so nice in the hand it's just beautiful um but yeah i mean you couldn't use it these days it, it's just too out of date it, it arrived with um android 8 and um exited i think on android 10 so it, it's got a goner now um but it had a beautiful gorgeous po led screen i think it was made by lg um and it was just bright and vibrant and it it took samsung's displays on at the time really really easily um it was water resistant uh, dust resistant lovely 5.5 inch size at the time tiny we would think now Um, but that screen was a 1440p one as well Um, always on display it was part of the android one program that nokia were doing which was just great you got your updates on time um it all worked really well it was stuck with 128 gigabytes of storage because there was no micro sd but six gigs of ram made it fly it had a two times optical zoom in there uh, even um 24 bit audio um a fingerprint scanner capacitive on the back like they did in the day um chi charging um there there was just so little to to complain for me about this phone it was just lovely 
and I loved owning it. I did a review, a written review of it, not a very long one, but I'll link to that in the show notes as well, in October of 2018. And um, in that, I just reflected really very much about um, the stuff that I'm saying um, here. And, uh, yeah, looking back across all the phones I've ever owned, right back to the the early Nokia um, S60 stuff, and even um, Series 80 before that, this was just the the most gorgeous piece of design I've ever used. Lovely. Do you remember it? I don't, and I'm just wondering why it wasn't such a big hit. Why wasn't it a big hit? Um, why wasn't it a big hit? I don't know. It, it, whenever oh, it's I'm expensive. looking at the renders of it, it. It started off at 699 That's right. That was what everyone's complaint was. That it might be a piece of gorgeous jewellery, but 700 quid. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was price. Yeah. Ah, right. Right, okay. Um, I, the the design of the sides, I keep thinking I've seen that in a movie, you know, where yeah, you're, whenever you're watching a movie, you can't help but being a tech addict. You're, you're kind of like, I wonder what film <laughs> yeah. that is they're using. And, and maybe it's in one of the Bond movies or something like that or, or what have you. But it, it I, I recognize that silver line down the side from someone standing there talking and I'm going, which okay. one's that? But whenever I have a look at, at all the images of it, you know, especially whenever it's sitting facing you, I am just thinking if I if I was to pick a phone that that was, it would just be maybe the Samsung Galaxy S10 or S9. Mm-hmm. It was that kind of area, and it, it it looks really like it. But obviously, around the back, it's a wee bit different. I like the minimalistic uh, camera on the back too, with the fingerprint yeah. sensor below it. That was a very nice time in phones whenever we had those uh, fingerprint sensors there. And whilst they weren't as practical as we find them now, um, it's it, it was still a nice time where you were able to, to do that, open up your phone, and then you could hit the power button on the side and close your phone again if you just wanted to check and see what was going on. Um, yeah. If you had a message or you had any notifications you'd missed or something like that. Um, and uh, it didn't last long. There was only a couple of years we had that novelty. Yeah. But yes, it is. It's a gorgeous yeah. looking phone. And it would be nice to be able to see this rocking a newer version of Cyanogen Mod or whatever you want to put yeah, on the, it. The Lineage OS, I, 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 it's not on the list for Lineage OS because that, that, de- yeah. that depends on some developer actually having one. And I think they're gone. Um, yeah. On reflection, I think you're right. The, the the reason is the price, and I do remember um, when I was reviewing it, it, I, it was just stupid amount of money. But it was just made beautifully, and I, 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 at the time, I I kind of thought, yeah, yeah, I really want this, and I and I sold some other stuff to be able to get there. But there you go, times move on. Yeah, but it just seems to be just power for the force for uh for nokia they just have all of these things that um they never really just hit as much as they they mm-hmm. could have they get something wrong and in this case it was yeah, the price. yeah 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 definitely and they continue to do that you know they, 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 they even the new nokia which this all is of course they just seem to yeah you're right they miss they they get the hammer they get the nail and they miss. They hit their thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite right. <laughs> okay, bargain basement. Uh, we're going to start off with, well, I suppose we could go to a bit of feedback because I noticed, uh, was it yesterday? I was, I was really busy yesterday and didn't get a chance to sit down and uh, draft a re- uh, reply to Aidan Bell's query over fast-forwarding and rewinding uh, yeah. TV. Uh, whenever you're using it, streaming and things like that. Um, but other folks in the the MeWe group have given appropriate responses, and I don't see the point in having to reiterate what they've said. But I will point out this deal on Amazon currently. And I think tomorrow uh, Amazon's going to have the spring sale. 
so we might see a few more uh, attractive lightning deals. Yeah. So ha- have a quick check of Amazon tomorrow and see see if you can pick anything up, especially if you're looking for anything that is Amazon based. You know, a, a Kindle or whatever. There there might be up to forty percent off mm-hmm. uh, various different items. But the Roku Express 4K is down in price from thirty nine pounds to twenty eight ninety nine. Aiden. Um, and I reckon you should buy one of those because they are pretty top-notch devices and they are the, the top uh, recommendation by everyone else who has commented to your query in uh, in uh, uh, MeWe. Um, and it, it's got all the apps here in the UK. Roku is the most recommended bit of hardware because it has all the apps. It's not missing stuff like Android and Apple are. So get this. You'll... Fast forward and rewind as best as you can. It's not. It's, it's never flawless. It all depends on your internet speeds and things like that. But this this is the the be all and end all whenever it comes to streaming sticks here. Very nice indeed. Right, my first one is the SanDisk Extreme two terabyte portable. Blah blah blah. Let's just check. It's still the same price. Yeah, it is. Um, this is <laughs> this is not the one that I've got. This is the faster one. I've got the five hundred twenty megabit per second. Um, or is it megabytes? I don't know. Steve will tell me off now. Per second, um, <laughs> read, read write speeds. This is the one that's got 1050 and 1000. So it's even better than mine. And it's half the price of the, the one that I bought. So I've got the two terabyte one that's less good to this. It costs nearly 300 quid. And this is 159. 56% off. Started off at 364 quid. And it's 159. These these units are just brilliant. I don't particularly need the fast mm. read write speeds that this one brings, so I'm perfectly happy with mine. But look at that reduction. That's such a good price, isn't it? Has it been cheaper? There's no, I don't think it's good. ever been cheaper than that, has it? No, it hasn't. No, 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 it hasn't. Although looking at it, it's been at that price since the start of March. It? Why are we only featuring mm, it? Good qu- oh yeah, so it has. Well, anyway, there it is. Um, I recommend that if you want an SSD um, that fits in your wallet, really dinky, um, then that is a really good option. Yes. It is, yeah. You could also hook this up to the likes of a PlayStation as well. If you're looking for uh, extra storage for your PlayStation mm-hmm. or Xbox, this would be a really good solution. The 2 terabyte um, for 160 quid is is oh, that's a good price, so yeah. Hmm. Very nice indeed. Four terabytes, three hundred and sixty. Yeah, not such a good deal on that. Um, it's the two that is the deal, isn't it? Yeah, but four terabytes still quite good. It's down from seven hundred and forty-five yeah. pounds. Don't think it's ever been that price. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, probably yeah. hasn't. Oh no, it, no, no, it hasn't. Uh, yeah, uh, mine. My, my, I've got a couple here. Uh, the Amazon are doing a wee bit of a thing on the pixels. Uh, the Pixel 7 is reduced in price from £778 to £500, or £499, and that includes a pair of the Buds Pro, uh, Pixel Buds uh, wireless earbuds, um, and this is for the 128 gigabyte version uh, in white, uh, whereas the 256 gigabyte version is down to £599, also including matching white buds oh no it says charcoal there i suppose the inside charcoal outside's white so yes um if you're in the market for a pixel 7 there's never been a better time to buy also if you go over to the pixel 6a which some people are still interested in it would appear um they've reduced all their prices down for 400 pounds to uh, between 284 pounds and 293 pounds depending on which color you want but, uh, yeah, the, the 6A is still a phone to be reckoned with. It's a 128 gigabyte version. Um, and, yeah, go for it. Uh, that, if you're looking at Pixel, buy them today. Excellent. Good stuff. There's one for you here, the Oppo Reno 8. Did you ever actually do the review on that? I did, I yeah. I remember seeing it. Is it on YouTube? I'll go I and did, watch it yeah. again. I, I loved it. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's a fantastic I, I think i did watch it but um i, I could just got a short attention memory span um i watch it again <laughs> it was arena way at pro oh, right, okay. just arena way so this is the ordinary eight and it's um 256 gigabyte eight gigabyte version and 
it's 299 quid down from 419 well it probably was never 419 but it's um allegedly 29% off 299 lot of a lot of phone in there including the 80 watt charging um so that is nice as well that's a 6.4 inch is that smaller than the pro i guess it probably was it is isn't it yeah no actually mm. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't have the, the pro here okay. now. Well, I'm, usually that's the way it goes. But anyway, yeah. So a nice reduction on that. And oh, here it is. Here's the pro. It's six point seven inch. Yeah. So you, so that's a bigger uh, version. The the pro. Um, so this is a dinky smaller one. Um, very nice. Okie dokie. Pig in a pokey. Dang. No, sorry, uh, my, my do not disturb has just turned off there as well, and I just got a message. Okay, um, we'll wrap this up quite quickly, it would appear. Um, next up is the Amazfit GTR2e smartwatch. Now, we've talked about this in the past because I've heard really good reports about this watch, and I know one person whose mother has it, and she loves it, um, but this is a wee... I'm not going to say it's a cheap, but it's it's still modestly priced uh, smartwatch that I think suffers from the name Amaze Fit because it sounds like some Crap. sort of cheap, <laughs> crappy, bought off the back of a truck uh, Chinese fitness watch. But it looks class and it's got a bunch of features that are really exciting. It's a fitness watch with a heart rate sensor, a sleep sensor, stress sensor. Uh, SPO2 monitor sports watch with 90 sports modes, 24 day battery life, 5 ATM waterproof and voice control. And the green version is currently £99, but there's a voucher you can apply, the £20 voucher, and that takes it down to £79. <laughs> Um, you can also get the black version for £84.82. and p It doesn't have a voucher, I don't think. I checked earlier. I've only got one left in stock as well. But uh, the, uh, with a wee bit of a quirky um, greenish, it's kind of a mint green, I think, um, strap on it, uh, this actually looks like a really cool option if you're looking for a, a watch that you don't have to charge every single night but it still monitors all your bits and pieces as you're on the go and boogieing about. Um, re review reports are very promising for it. It's good build quality, uh, works very well, nicely integrates into Amazon, or Amazon, uh, Android. Uh, so, yeah, uh, do check this out at £79. If you're looking for a smartwatch, that's the one to go for. When you say it's nicely integrated into Amazon... Um, Android, uh, Android, uh, the, the, Amazfit is, is all about Alexa and Android. Uh, sorry, and Amazon, isn't it? I thought it was this, it, or is Amazfit not an Amazon thing anymore? No, I don't think it's an. It's they're they're just, they just happen to have the first four letters uh, okay. the same as Amazon. Uh, it's not okay. Amazon. <laughs> right. Okay. I I thought it was the the companies were tied up um, together. And they just screwed up the name. Uh, no, but it, it does say Alexa built into it. Yeah, um, yeah. But I imagine it, it works well with Android because, well, Amazon uses Android. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit of looking into that because I'm not quite sure about them. But, yeah, so <laughs> it's certainly a good price, isn't it? And it looks like a nice watch for those yeah. that want watches. Talking about nice things looking nice i've never heard of this company i don't know if you have sanyun have you heard of sanyun no i haven't the, as a pair of bookshelf speakers active speakers um bluetooth 5 60 watt output um 24 bit dac built in 3d dynamic surround sound um and yeah just a really nice dinky pair of speakers i was actually quite surprised at how small they were if you look down at the picture of somebody with them by their laptop you can see how small they are i kind of imagined they were bigger they've got a um, bass and treble control on the side and much like um and a volume much like marshall speakers do and they're 59 quid they were 90 quid down to 59 quid and i could see these if i didn't have my razor speakers i i think i would have these by my 
my computer because they just look really, really cool. And they review really well, even though I've never heard of the company. Most people, there are a few dissenters, but most people are saying that um, they're, you know, for the money, they, they really are ever so good. Um, and there, there are some people complaining about the Bluetooth is a bit dodgy, but, but you know, th- I think that's um, the odd one, that they look really good. So, yes, if my Razor speakers break, I'll get those. You see, whenever it comes to audio gear, I think you're all right to have whatever brand you like, because if you get someone who is knowledgeable about audio, they'll probably come in and go, hmm, this must be some sort of specialized audio file stuff that I haven't heard of. I'll have to investigate this brand. And then other people who are who would maybe just go, oh, you don't have Sony speakers? You're no one, right? Uh, but if you have something else, it's, it's almost like, oh, you, you know your audio, right? This must be something special. Right. <laughs> so I think you can get away with having weird, dodgy brands, okay. as opposed <laughs> to like if you had a a, a, a TV with bland blung written on the front of it, they would go, oh, right, okay, that's that's some crap that you've picked up in a in a market somewhere. But yeah. this this would I I reckon you would get away with a strange brand on a pair of speakers and be able to sit behind a stroke your beard and go. Yes, it's a very good set of speakers, I'll have you know. I really like Only cost me 60 quid, but very good set of yeah, speakers. Yeah, yeah, I, I just really like the fact that it's got physical um, controls for treble and bass and all that, and volume. Yeah. Oh, actually, that middle one is not... Oh, the treble and bass is on one control. That's a bit odd. And the middle one says... Does, is that something mode? I can't read it. Some, oh, there it is. Um, treble control knob. Volume. Oh, that's volume at the top. The treble. Oh, yeah, it is treble and bass. It didn't look like that on the other picture. Anyway, just ignore me and carry on. Okay. Well, I will say about uh, bookshelf speakers on your computer, um, they take up a lot of space in your desk. Yeah, I have a pair of bookshelf speakers that quite, I use on my computer. But they're quite dinky. That's, that's what I was saying. If you look at that picture right. of the one next to the laptop. No? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Where did they go? I had a wee pair of Edifier ones that were that kind of size. I don't know where they are. Because I, I put them in, but they didn't sound as good as the Edifiers that I have here now that I can't remember which ones they are. But they are so big. I'm always yeah. running out of desk space going, oh, no, no, if only I could... Put these somewhere else. No, no, these, these actually look really dinky. Well, I'm assuming that that laptop is not like a 17-inch huge laptop or bigger. Yes. Um, but if you look at the size of the coffee cup and the, the, the mobile phone, um, yeah, I, I think they're quite dinky. In fact, if we were being really smart, we'd look at the measurements of them, which I'm sure is in the details somewhere. <laughs> I'm just. I see that picture of the desktop with the laptop, right? Yeah. And then there's the speaker beside it. Yeah. If you scroll up, there's a picture on the wall with a deer in it. Yeah. And it says below it adornment picture. Uh huh. So they've they've bought the the picture frame, stuck it on the wall, and left the the picture that was in it <laughs> when oh, I you see. buy it. It's a, it's a setup for a for an Amazon photo. <laughs> it is, but it's his adornment picture, which is kind of weird. <laughs> very, very odd indeed. What's that blue ring around that speaker? That's a bit odd as well, isn't it? Uh, maybe it's a Simon Templar speaker. <laughs> yeah. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Right, the last one, the last one, the last one is... Uh, I think we might have done this one before, but I almost bought it as well a couple of weeks ago uh, when it was down at this price... It might have been even lower, but we've mentioned it, I'm sure, at some stage. This is the Honor Pad 8. It's a 12-inch Wi-Fi tablet with octa-cores processors inside, uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. Hardly amazing, but I think for the price tag, this works really nicely. It's £189.99p. There is also the Honor Pad X8, 
which has four gigabytes of RAM and 164, or with 64 gigabytes of storage, which is 160 pounds. So an extra 20 quid gets you double the storage space. It's got that 2K full display and eight speakers around it. That's why it made me think of, we've talked about this before, the eight speakers. Yeah. And if you scroll down to the, the blurb, the infographic, mm -hmm. there's a picture of a little girl singing and an old man with shades on and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and an acoustic guitar. And I just, just, I've, I've seen that before and it looks kind of fun. Um, it's got 22.5 watt charging and a 7,250 milliamp hour battery. I really think this is a pretty cool looking thing. And it's got it's got some sort of phone on screen software built in that you can access your phone through the screen. Uh, Multi-screen collaboration, that's what they call it. Mobile phone and tablet operation on the same screen, mm. uh, which is kind of nice too. Mm. I do fancy this. Um, if they were doing me installment plans, I might actually grab one of these, but they're not. I thought they were. Yeah. Have you seen that they've re-jiggled what they how they do the instalment plans thing now? So if you go yeah. if you go down through the 189 price, then the two boxes for the X8, right underneath that, enhance your purchase, and then yeah. there's a drop down with payment plans inside it. And if you drop yes. that down, that's where it tells you if you've got five months to pay or whatever. I know, because two weeks ago I had to walk you through this live on air. I think even the listeners were going, Ted, come on, oh, open your eyes. Is that what you were saying? <laughs> but, but I, well, I, I obviously couldn't see it then, because um, it, yes. it suddenly popped up, um, and now I've got it. So, yeah. I, yeah, I um, it doesn't show on everything, but I think it, it'll it'll sh it shuffle things about, and it'll show it for you, but not for me, and that kind of thing. Oh, but in this dear, one I've got, dear. I don't have the Amazon as long as I've only got Barclays and one-time payment. Yeah, yeah, so have I, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but if I if I found one that did have instalments, that's where it was going to be, and whereas before it was off to the right hand side in that column. But if you told me this before, then I apologise. Yeah, well, we've been down that road before, okay. so let's not go there again. Like we have with the <laughs> Honor Pad Eight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I th I think it's a, a, a yeah. smart looking yeah, tablet yeah, um, with eight speakers that, and it, it promises to turn you into a cool old dude with an acoustic guitar. Yeah, eight speakers Brilliant. is a great idea. The 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 whole speakers thing. I wish phones would routine. I suppose it's down to space inside to put speakers in, and they're yeah. trying to make phones. But when you've got a whack and great big six point eight inch phone, you think surely you can put at least four speakers in there. Come on, come on. Well, also this is a twelve-inch tablet, so it's probably got room to spare. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. there's a there's a small uh, group of chickens as well. I don't know what's happening with chickens this week, but um, you you can fit lots and lots of things in there. A couple of chicken breasts, a couple of legs, maybe a thigh. Mm, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll bring the uh, the the show to a close there because we're we've run long this week. Oh dear. Oh, well, people won't be complaining then. That's great. Um. Yes, you can get in touch with us by emailing us at gareth at techaddicts uk. You can also find us on Twitter as well uh, at techaddicts uk, and you can find me on Twitter too at gareth miles. I'm also on Mastodon. I'll throw that in there as well because everybody forgets about Mastodon, and I have my garethmiles dot com. Ted, where can they find you? I have my tedsalmon.com. Links in there to all I do, audio podcasts, and crucially, all the links to our MeWe groups. If you're not in our MeWe group, come and join us. Check out those links and also in the show notes. If you want to buy me a coffee, you can do that. That's at paypal.me forward slash tedsalmon. Thank you so much in advance. Rip, roaring, rootin' tootin'. We'll be back in two weeks' time with another... Exciting installment of Tech Addicts, and we should have a Ricky to throw at you as well. Hopefully, with any luck, Whoa. you never know. And he can tell us all about the chickens. Right? <laughs> Take care now. Goodbye. Bye.